How many of you have ever been conned by somebody, taken advantage of by somebody? How many of you? Come on, raise your hands up. Look at that. Look at that. Several years ago, we had a member in our church. Some of you might remember him. His name was Bob Ron. How many of you remember Bob Ron? All right. Great guy. Him and his, his wife, Lois, uh, they were both members of our church. They were beautiful people, beautiful Christians. We loved them dearly. Uh, just about everything you see in this church, Bob had his hands in. Believe me. When you come back next month and you see us decorating the church for Christmas, Bob had his hand in all of that. You'll see Bob's fingerprints on everything in this church. He was very active, very involved. Great guy. I mean, everybody loved Bob. He had that kind of a personality. And, uh, <laughs> and one day, and, and I want to tell you the story about Bob, and I, can, I feel that I can tell this story now because long ago Bob and his wife Lois passed away, and they're in heaven, so they can't hear what I'm saying. So they're not going to be embarrassed, okay, by what I say. I couldn't tell you this story before, and I had to wait until this message to be able to tell it to you. So let me just explain what happened to poor Bob, all right? Middle of the night, he got a phone call from somebody who sounded just like his grandson. And Bob, he loved his grandson, loved him dearly. And his grandson told him, or this person told him, he said, Grandpa, I'm in Canada, and I'm in jail. And I can't get out of jail unless I have bond money. And so Bob said, well, how much money do you need? And he said, I need $10,000. And so Bob said, well, you know, before I send $10,000, I need to have some confirmation. You know, you're up there, I'm down here. I need to know. So he said, all right, Grandpa, call this number, and the person will help give you the information that you need. So Bob did. Bob took the number, he called it. It was supposed to be a, a Bales bondsman, and he asked the person, do you know my grandson? This is his name. Yes, we know him. He's been trying to get out of jail. He can. He needs bond. He says, uh, Bob says, well, how much does he need? He needs $10,000 for the bond. And Bob says, okay, how do I send it to you? And he said, just wire it to us. And he gave him all the information for wiring the $10,000. And so Bob did. Immediately after he hung up, he called. I, I don't remember if it was uh, Western Union or whoever, but he called. He wired the $10,000 so that his grandson could get out of jail. And then he got this little feeling on the back of his neck after he wired the money. And he did a little more investigating, and he found his grandson was really not in Canada at all. That his grandson was here in the United States, right here in this area, doing very well. And he was conned out of $10,000 that he never was able to recuperate, never able to get back. I mean, that, that is a pretty bad thing, don't you think? I mean, that's a terrible thing, you know, to have somebody con you out of $10,000. But I want you to know what's even worse than that. What's even worse than being conned out of $10,000 is being conned by a false teacher with his false teachings who can destroy you spiritually. That's even worse. They're the kind of people that deal in counterfeit truth. And Peter wrote this entire book of 2 Peter to help us to understand about these people, to warn us about false teachers. And he describes them for us in detail so we can recognize them when we see them and when we hear them. And this is what he says in chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories that they have made up. 